GraphQL, love it or hate it, it did change how we do web dev forever. It's hard to find a company that isn't at least considered using GraphQL for the work that they do. GraphQL solved so many problems for so many companies, Twitch included. And honestly, GraphQL was a huge part of why I was able to make the move from backend to front end because the schema gave me a method to communicate between the backend and front end teams and for the first time, confidently live on one side knowing the other side would do what it's supposed to as long as it worked to the schema and spec we agreed on. The amount of comms problems between teams and companies that GraphQL solved is hard to understate. It is truly incredible for getting your backend team running Golang and your front end team running React to have a common language to build around and iterate on. That doesn't mean it's perfect. Actually, far from it. GraphQL requires you to throw away a lot of the best parts of the web, and it also requires a significant buy-in to get started in the first place. There are projects like Apollo and Redwood that do their best to make GraphQL more accessible, but I find that the result of those projects isn't that they make GraphQL easier, it's that the wrong people end up using GraphQL. And the hard truth is, very few people should be. Because GraphQL isn't a way to make APIs easier, GraphQL is a language for schemas that is pretty hard to implement correctly. And if you do it incorrectly, it's actually quite a bit worse than the alternatives. So how do we end up here? Before GraphQL, there was a very real problem of backend APIs returning massive blobs for any request. So if you want a user's information, it might return you a half megabyte of JSON, including all of that user's friends. And if you wanted a subset of that, then a new API had to be made to dictate which subset of that information would be returned. You had to get your backend team to build it, agree to it, ship it, and then finally, maybe, you'd be able to consume that on the front end. This process took forever. And it was particularly frustrating when the data was already there and resulted in people just fetching way too much data for the vast majority of the things they were building. The original goal of GraphQL was to allow the API to expose all of the data that you would ever need on the client. And then the client could use the graph schema to select the subset of the data they want. So instead of getting all of a user's information and like the 500 different values you might have on a user, you can get just their username, their profile picture and their ID and use those to render the profile image, which is probably what you wanted to do in many cases. GraphQL allowed for us on front end effectively craft the exact API we needed based on what the component that we were building needed and based on the feature that we were creating. Before GraphQL, we had to do a lot of work to make the right APIs. We often just wouldn't do it. A post in your newsfeed that's a video probably needs very different data than a post that's a text post or a photo album or an advertisement. And GraphQL is invented to allow those different things to select the data they needed and no more or less. What happens if you're requesting the wrong data in your app though? You'll probably get an error. And how are you gonna deal with that? If you don't have a good logging setup, you're kind of screwed. Thankfully, today's sponsor has you covered. Highlight.io is the full stack open source monitoring platform. If you use any of the stuff that we've talked about here, there's a good chance Highlight's going to make it much much easier to solve problems that your users have. If you're using GraphQL or TRPC, you get procedure level analysis. You can see the GraphQL query right in the monitoring tool. It's so nice. You can play back a session and see what queries were made when and where the bug actually happened. If you've spent more than 15 minutes trying to reproduce a bug, Highlight's going to make your life significantly better. Anyways, back to talking about GraphQL and why I don't think you should use it. As a front-end developer, we immediately saw some significant benefits. Obviously, we were fetching the right data for the first time. We were able to do what felt like defining the exact API we needed immediately in the front-end without having to spin up another repo, learn another language, and bridge all of these gaps. It also gave us type safety on what data we were getting from the server. It required a code gen step to convert the GraphQL query into type definitions, but at the very least, you could get that. And we also had really good state in our components, things like is loading, error, and the actual data, obviously correctly typed. We can get a lot of these benefits in other ways now, though. We can get the ability to redefine your API and have type safety there all through TRPC. You can just right click, go to definition, and in the same code base, go from your front end to your back end and adjust your APIs or make new ones exactly as you need, because an API is no longer this formally defined thing that has to be agreed on by a bunch of teams. It's just a function that you call on your client. Obviously, that's not perfect for everybody, but it's clearly the direction we're moving in with things like React server components going very deep in that direction. Instead of fetching from an API, we are directly loading data on backend and returning the correct HTML. These patterns allow us to never overfetch or never really think about overfetching in the first place. We just write what we need where we need it. But what about all the other benefits? The benefit of type safety 
safety we found through things like tRPC or even type definitions on top of OpenAPI. For iteration and writing the right API, we now have tRPC as well as React server components. For the loading error in all of those states, server components have helped a good bit there. But honestly, React Query has been the real magic piece, giving us the ability to have good developer experience around any promise inside of our React applications. There has been so much innovation emulating and honestly superseding the benefits of what GraphQL gave us. But there's still one thing GraphQL does that nothing else does as well, which is define a strict contract between your back end and your front end. If I have a different back end team and front end team and they don't necessarily get along or even talk that much, it's really hard to make product move fast. And if you can get them to sit down in a room, pull up the design that they're working on and figure out exactly what data is needed, agree on what the schema should look like to get that data, the back end team goes and does their thing, the front end team goes and does their thing, and then they can plug it all in, that benefit is still not matched in any other system. The developer experience wins that GraphQL felt were, were beyond real in pretty much every front end leaning dev that used it in the mid 2010s to early 2020s immediately saw the benefit of having your type definitions, the correct data being fetched and all of these states managed for you in the GraphQL tools that we had. Because of that, I find a lot of front end developers thinking GraphQL is the solution to all of their problems. And that if they use GraphQL correctly, they'll never have to learn or use backend. And here is where we get to uh, a thing I've talked about a bit here. One of the hardest truths, GraphQL does not belong in your goddamn database. Please, for the love of God, stop pretending GraphQL is an alternative to SQL. It is not. The strength of GraphQL is between your backend team and your frontend team having a method to communicate and build tools around. And it comes at costs. Maintaining that schema is difficult. Getting it right is even more difficult. Building the right tools and integrations and code mods and code gen and all the things you need to actually benefit from GraphQL, and much less maintain it over time, is a ton of work. And there is a painful number of companies and developers who think GraphQL is this thing that once it's added to your tech, it's magically better because for them on front end, it kind of was. Somebody else went and did all the hard work of building the resolvers, getting things cached properly, getting the schema set up, getting the code gen all working. And if you're just consuming that as a front end dev, fuck yeah, have fun. It's really good once it's set up right. But God, setting it up right, maintaining it, it's incredibly difficult. And you can get almost all of these same benefits with new tools given that you're willing to work in a fully TypeScript environment. And it seems like a lot of us are. And even if you're not, if you do have the occasional API call that needs to be done through something else, there are better and better solutions for that. And man, if you don't set up your GraphQL right, you're pretty screwed because everything in GraphQL is based on post, which means good luck caching. There's no real way to cache your GraphQL using traditional standards. So you're gonna have to build your own cache layer between your resolvers and the actual GraphQL endpoint that's providing things to your users. There are companies that do this now because they're effectively necessary if you wanna scale your GraphQL endpoints. Not easy to do right. On top of that, I've seen a lot of companies starting to build APIs for third parties to access GraphQL, like GitHub making a GraphQL API for us to consume against. And every time I hear somebody hyping these up, I just have to conclude they haven't used them a whole lot. As soon as you use two of them in the same project, good luck, have fun. GraphQL is not a standard enough standard to have consistency in how it's implemented in different projects. It's, it's inconsistent to say the least. And once you're pulling GraphQL from multiple places, you're in for a lot of trouble. And while some services have implemented GraphQL APIs okay, you're much more at the liberty of how the developer thinks about, understands, and implements GraphQL than you are if they have a more traditional REST API. And generally, I reach for REST when I'm calling third-party services. I've made this chart, I made this a while ago, it comes up every now and then, of when I think different technologies make the most or least sense. GraphQL has a lot of space on this chart. When you are when you have different teams at the same company, one's on backend and one's on front end, and those teams need a way to communicate and build a schema that is how they interact, GraphQL is really hard to beat as a method to, to bridge that gap. But if the front end devs can write back end code and the back end devs can make changes on front end, the implicit contracts that a solution like tRPC includes makes it so hard to go back to GraphQL because you can right click, go to definition on your front end and be in the back end function that you were calling. And if you need something slightly different, you can copy paste the function and return something slightly different. It's so much easier in tRPC to make the exact API you need for your client. So much so that is the direction React is going in. And we see here with Dan's tweet, credit where it's due, data-driven code splitting in React Server Components is largely inspired by Relay, which has data-driven dependencies. React Server Components takes everything we learned about loading code and data
data over the last 10 years and synthesizes that into an approach that's 100% React. If you're not using Relay, you're using GraphQL wrong some amount. Other solutions make it easy to adopt GraphQL and get it working properly in your team. But if you're not using Relay, the performance users get is gonna be worse than traditional REST a large portion of the time. The Relay compiler does a phenomenal job of going through your app and compiling the exact right queries to load all of your data in one pass and does a great job at that. And their cache layer does as well. But you need to follow Relay's spec from day one for all of this to work because they are very strict about how you actually define your GraphQL schema. That said, the performance that Relay gets you is still unmatched to this day. And if you really want to build the, the perfect front-end application with the ability to iterate on top of it, Relay will slow you down as you adopt it. But once you've got everything working, it will allow you to move with confidence and get performance that's otherwise not possible. That's one of the hardest truths I know of GraphQL is that Relay is basically the only way to use it right. And almost nobody knows how to use Relay because it's really hard to set up. Thankfully, as I was just showing, the React team knows that. And rather than making Relay easier to adopt, they're taking the best parts and they're putting them into React. So yet again, one more hard truth makes less and less sense to use GraphQL when the best parts of GraphQL are finding their way into all the other stuff that we use. And I want to make it very, very clear. If you're not subscribed, you should fix that. But aside from that, I want to make it very clear, we wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for GraphQL. I would not be on YouTube talking about all this stuff if GraphQL didn't enable me to move to front end confidently. But the lessons we learned from GraphQL, we learned hard and fast, and we've applied them incredibly well. None of this is meant to say GraphQL is bad, and none of this is even meant to say you shouldn't use GraphQL. The point of this is, the hard truth is that GraphQL solved problems, and we've since copied those solutions. And there are very few problems left that GraphQL uniquely solves. The big one is that team split schema problem. And if you have that, you probably should have already considered GraphQL by now. If you haven't, take a look. It's a really good solution for the architecture of your company. But GraphQL solves a company problem now, not a technical one. If you're adopting GraphQL, the reasons for that are at an organization level, not at a technical one anymore. I hope this is helpful because I've seen so many companies going down the GraphQL rabbit hole for reasons that make almost no sense at all. Let me know what you think about this. Flame me in the comments if you love GraphQL and you think I'm entirely wrong about this, but know that the GraphQL conference is inviting me to talk about exactly this. So at the very least, a lot of people in the GraphQL community, they get it. Thank you guys as always, appreciate y'all. I have another video about GraphQL pinned there. It's a pretty good one. So check it out if you haven't yet. Peace, nerds.